Okay, so we're going to use Tiffany as an example of how to utilize the questions that I just asked and help interpret um, how you feel really loved or what love means to you. Um, just to kind of anchor back into the purpose of this exercise, when you're looking to create, because we've established that we're all creating, right? And it's coming from our hearts and our desires and how we feel, you have to kind of have an idea of what the heck that means to you then. So many people I find don't actually really, are not really aware, um, I was one of them for a long time, of what love means to them. So what, what would we know to bring into our lives if we don't have that definition? Does that make sense? It's okay. like, it's kind of like asking, um, you know, somebody to please us uh, on any level, let's just say sexually, um, for the purpose of this conversation. If we don't know what we want, how the heck can we, it, you know what I mean? How can we give that information to somebody else? So people aren't mind readers. Well, that goes to the same, you know, level of the universe and being conscious creators. If you don't know what you're seeking, then you can't send that clear message out. And so you're not going to be able to receive what you're what makes you feel good, right? So it's kind of the same thing and, and it's, you know, to put in a way that people can relate to, it's like with a sexual partner. You have to know, or just in general in life, what makes you happy, what makes you thrive, what does love mean to you? So to use this as an example, let's go through these questions. And if you can let me know, and I'll be taking notes and I'll help you interpret, you'll see. What was the first time that you felt really loved? What was going on there? Um, I remember times that you know you feel love but the time that I really felt love like it was really deep in my heart mm -hmm. was I was already married and my spouse was holding me in his arms and looking really deep in my eyes and I it was like this whole like feeling just came over me like wow mm -hmm. this how, is mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. really love and how did that make you feel like where did you feel it what did that feel like to you um I'll I'll say I felt it in my upper body type, my mind, mm -hmm, my upper body. Mm -hmm. um, it was a real strong feeling, and it felt um, a very secure comfort mm -hmm. type feeling. I love it. Okay. Awesome. And you'll see this, how it all incorporates. It's so beautiful. And everybody loves really uniquely. That's another you know thing to everybody's messages and their memories will have different kind of key things because everybody's so unique. Um, okay, so the second one was, when did you first fall in love? And where were you? Who were you with? How did that feel? Okay, that was a real hard one for me because I was like, I was thinking like in high school when you fall in love. And I was like, well, that's not really love. And um, again, it was uh, I with my spouse. And it was like, I just remember thinking, this is the perfect person for me to be with and um, again I was pro I, I think I was already married mm -hmm. um, so I felt I was in love but that really deep feeling of love came several years later to where I mean I, I knew I loved him and felt loved but that really like where you're just heart and soul and body is in it was several years later and uh, I just it, I felt it, but I, I was when, older. When you were feeling it, like, how did you feel within that? Did that make you feel joyous or happy or, you know, secure? What are some words that um, you... Word-wise, I would say it it made me feel comfort. It made me feel secure. It made me feel um, like I could take on anything and nothing... Uh, protected, I guess. Mm -hmm. I could take on anything and I would be protected. Mm -hmm. He would make sure I was protected. Very cool. Okay, good. And so then the last one was, what was the most recent time that you felt really loved? What okay. was going on there? Um, just recently, mm -hmm. um, involved with a gentleman. And I could, I felt when he looked at me in my eyes and the way he looked at me that he, he was so in awe and so in love with me that it made me feel that I felt very, very loved. But I didn't have that security, comfort, um, protected feeling. But it seemed like his actions and his eyes told me that he was very much in love with me. So if you didn't have those feelings, what, what feelings were you feeling in their place? Was it like euphoric or blissful or satisfied like how are you how did you feel um i think satisfied i felt sexual mm -hmm. um like that yeah i 
guess that's kind of the way kind it, it was is a different it was totally different feelings mm, interesting 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 okay good um so now to kind of help you interpret this and you know you can apply this to to different things it could be how you want to receive love from people but also first and foremost because we know the basis is self-love we're going to later in the in the workshop work on integrating these techniques for you in your day-to-day -day life so you'll want to give these sensations and feelings to yourself right okay. every time that you check in with your heart um because you can do this visual technique now that you know it anytime you're gonna have maybe different um, feelings that come through it might be the same memory of different feelings that time could be the same because there are key factors about who we are that never change then there are things that change daily you know what I mean which we see through the progression of your life now okay. this this later love was a little bit different but it still had some of the same things so if I were to look at you some words that you've repeated and definitely stood out to me you said the word deep a lot um, through through the different um through the different memories thank you the first two particularly like see there i think i just circled deep like four or five times um so for you depth is really important you're never going to be somebody who is a shallow lover so it's you're not going to so love at first sight's probably not going to happen for you it could be you could be intrigued at first sight but you're never going to give it all right then and there does that make sense yes you need more and it shows in your memories you actually didn't even a lot of people the first time they remember feeling really love is from childhood you actually waited until you were married and the reason being a lot of the words that came through for you for love were words like security comfort protection so for you to feel really loved from a partner or remember we're our own best partner first and foremost from yourself you need to feel comforted you need to feel secure and you need to feel like you're seen like you're really seen by that person because you you had mentioned the eye contact right. and just feeling really embraced and feeling really loved by that person um so love for you is going to need to be anchored in something really deep that could be I don't know, it could be a common connection that you have with a person, you know, like you and I, we, we met and it was like, oh, we have a soul connection here. Mm -hmm. We see each other on some level. So there's a feeling of depth. And from that space, then you're able to open in it and have this experience. Because like I said, love could be with, you know, everybody around you. So for you, when we ask, what does love mean to you? Words like depth, comfort, strength. And like I said, this will truly be different with everybody. Okay. It, it, which is interesting and fun. Some people... It's like they need to have adventure and friendship and you know what I mean? Right. It's okay. so unique. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. So for you, if you can hear these words and bring them into your life every day. So for instance, okay, I'm not feeling secure and confident. Well, how can I sit maybe and write a list about all the ways that right now in this moment, I'm secure and protected. I've provided a roof for myself over my head. I have food and drink in the refrigerator. Holy smokes, I can draw a bath right now and I've got rose petals I can throw them in. Woo! You're comforted right there, girl. Okay. You're you're cared for. Do you see how that flips your vibration? Yeah. So you go I would never have looked at it that way. Yeah. And it's simple things just like that. That's what I was talking to uh, Jane about. Was saying she she was here uh, previously. She just bought the book before um, you know, the workshop started. And what we had talked about was like there's the small little things that you don't really think about but the universe operates based on your vibration so it's not it's not gray you feel me it's black or white okay so you can then go from feeling disempowered because you're not receiving that right comfort or depth or whatever right. to totally empowered because you you've, you're now empowered to give that to yourself and you know what it takes Tiffany knows what it takes to be and feel really loved. So she's gonna give those sensations to herself. Now, here's where the magic comes in. You are like a little radio. So whatever you're dialing into, your frequency, you're drawing that in, right? So are we on a country, are we listening to polka, whatever. Your station feels like smooth jazz to me, just saying, okay. <laughs> right? Rich and deep, you know, this is my example. But right. you can dial into that frequency, so now you're going from a space where you're lonely and disempowered to comforted provided for secure and love in your own self and guess what that radiates out there 
to the universe and draws, because we attract what we are, right? Okay, yes. Okay? Yes. And draws that essence to you. So if you're completely comforted, totally empowered, then that's the radiation and the vibration you're sending out to the universe. That's your frequency you're dialed into. So now you're not receiving, you know, broken up polka music that you have you hate, you don't want anything to do with. Okay. But you're creating it by default, right? By feeling like shit, by blah 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 blah. We all go there. It's, okay. it's not, you know, you're our example and you're brave, so thank you. But it's everybody in different ways. So the the idea to change that is do this technique, find out what love means to you, so what you need to feel really loved, right? Because that was our basically what we asked ourselves. And then to give those things to yourself. Now, I love how we went from um, the depth and things like that, and we could actually kind of physically see what I had mentioned about how love changes over time. Mm -hmm. Our needs change over time. That's sometimes the difficulties within partnerships is because people were one way when they got together, and, and they've they totally grown changed. and changed. Right? So it's like, oh my gosh, like you're now you're on country and I'm on like 99K rock. Woohoo! You know, these two can't come together. So what happens is it's always a redefining process of checking into our hearts, communicating our wants, needs, desires, and then allowing ourselves to fill that space first and then letting that reflection come into our lives. If our partners are meant to go the distance with us, because it's contracts, could be five years, could be 10 years, 15, they'll calibrate, they'll send out, they'll tap into their hearts, calibrate their needs, and then you'll come together and harmonize, right? Peace and the indifference in that harmonizing space, or they'll drift away from your life, but it's effortless. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. So, and you can ask questions too if you want okay. after, and we can you know kind of go deeper, but that the whole kind of purpose of this exercise and what I love about your answers is that love changes and our needs and wants change over time. So when we got to your your last um, answer, which was when was the most recent time that you felt really loved? It's funny because there was more words like ah and although every time it was a divine masculine, so that's important for you. It's really important for you to feel loved by the, the divine masculine. Yes, very mm -hmm. much so. Mm -hmm. And which doesn't shock me because you're very feminine. So that would be your kind of balancing light. Um, it didn't involve the, the initial words, but it involved words like satisfied and passionate, sexual. Um, it felt more alive and charged. And so perhaps you are now going to integrate both of those things. Maybe love for a while for you meant security and depth. And now maybe it means those things, but it also means fire and passion and change and new beginnings and things like that, right? Right. So when you're feeling low and you're not feeling like you're receiving or feeling really loved, how can you give those things to yourself? Can you be like, hey, spontaneous, I'm awesome night. I'm going to turn the heater on in the pool and make myself a martini and just rock it out. You know, turn the radio on. <laughs> like it's literally things that are that simple that you can understand why. Like I jump into like break dance sometimes and I'm just like, hey, you know, and I just start dancing around and people are like, oh, I'm like, well, I'm recreating okay. my frequency. Does that make sense? Yes, that does. Do you have any it questions? Does. No. Perfect.